Macho Vanderpool might be a world beater now on the road and a megastar in the sport, but where he made his biggest impact early on was nowhere else but cyclocross. An exceptional rider that spawned a cycling dynasty within this branch of cycling. Throughout the years of dominance and sheer class by the rider himself, there is one question that still needs to be answered. Is Macho Van der Poel truly the greatest cyclocross rider of all time or does terrain of doubt unveil contenders from the past that could challenge his lofty claim? Before we start, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you want to check out his history on the road. Why not? click on the video here. Vanderpool dipped his toe into cyclocross during the 2009-2010 season, heralding the commencement of a career that would rewrite the sport's history books. Vanderpool's transition to the junior category, victory after victory, 24 in total, including the European Championships in Luka. His dominance extended to overall triumphs in the World Cup competition in the junior rank and the Super Prestige as well, ahead of a young Wout Van Aert, leaving no doubt to this dominance. In the 2012-2013 season, Machu continued his dominance once again, winning all 30 races that season. He not only secured the European Championships, but also triumphed in the World Cup, even winning the World Championships in Louisville, where he was without rivals. The next year in 2013-2014 marked Vanderpool's shift into the elite category. He was gaining traction on the road as well, but in cyclocross, he won multiple under-23 races including four World Cup rounds that was accompanied by the overall competition and he was also second in his very first elite race in the Sudal Skeldacross behind Nils Albert who was nine years his senior and a former world champion at the time. He won a plethora of under 23 races but he was denied the under 23 world championship crown which was won by none other than his arch rival Wout Van Aert. The winter of 2014-2015 started for Vanderpool at the Gieten Super Prestige round. After fighting a long battle with the countryman Lars van der Haar, van der Poel managed to win his first major competition among the elite. However, he had to wait until mid-December for his second victory. During the Skelda Cross, he rode away halfway through the race and won by force. And at the beginning of February, he also managed to win the World Championships in Tabor in Czech Republic ahead of Wout van Aert and Lars van der Haar. He managed to clinch this feat at only 20 years old and 13 days, becoming the youngest ever world champion, several months younger than Eric de Vlaming, who won it back in 1966. More on him later. Two weeks later, thanks to a second place in the Milder Creek, he also won overall of the Super Prestige in the Elite category. This was only one point more than Kevin Powell's. In the summer of 2015, Vanderpool crashed during the fourth stage of the Tour de la Bernier. He suffered a knee injury and therefore missed the first part of the cyclocross season. He eventually made his comeback at the end of November with a third place in the Dunicross. Two weeks later, he achieved his first victory of the season in Overeisen, and a month later, he won the national championships for a second time in a row. And in the build-up to the national championships, he also managed to win the famous race of Solda and Daigem. At the world championships, Van der Poel finished fifth, 47 seconds behind his arch nemesis of Wout Van Aert, unfortunately. During the summer of 2016, Vanderpool had to undergo further surgery on his knees, and as a result, he had to miss the first few races of the 2016-2017 season, and in October, he rode his first race in Geiton. He immediately managed to win after an exciting duel between himself and Wout Van Aert, and he also won in Sonborn and Walkenburg before finishing second at the European Championships, which was won by two nuts. In November, Vanderpool won his fourth consecutive Super Prestige event in Gaver. However, he was unable to complete the series victories as he finished second in Spa Frankenchamps. At the end of December, Van der Poel had a serious crash in the Asencross, and for a while there was fears for the rest of his season. But in the end, the damage turned out to not be too bad. Three weeks later, he had to settle for silver at the World Championships in Luxembourg after four punctures. Wild Van Aert managed to win once again, and that was much to the dismay of Macho Van der Poel. In February, Van der Poel achieved his 12th victory of the season in the final round of the Super Prestige in Milkenkirch and thanks to that victory he won the overall final classification for a second time and managed to win 7 out of the 8 Super Prestige rounds which was quite phenomenal to say the least. In the 2017-2018 season Van der 
Michael managed to win no fewer than 32 races. He also stood on the podium 38 times in total and unsurprisingly win the final classification of the Super Prestige for a third time in his career. And he also won the final classification of the World Cup and also the DVV Insurance Trophy as well. Including all this, Van der Poel had also won the European Championships that was in Tapo in Czech Republic where he had managed to pull away from the whole field on the second lap and triumphed with 22 seconds ahead of fellow Dutchman Lars van der Haar. And a month later, he had to settle for a third place in the World Championships in Valkenburg. Unfortunately, Wout van Aert became the World Champion for a third time in a row and Michael van Toerhout finished second. In the 2018-2019 season, van der Poel again showed extreme dominance by winning 32 out of the 34 races that he took part in. He became the European Champion for the second time and as well as World Champion for a second time. He won the final classification of the Super Prestige for a fourth time. Further to this, he also managed to win all eight super prestige races matching Sven Nace's incredible performance in the 2006-2007 season. The following year, in 2019-2020, he had come off a very incredible year on the road and started at the beginning of November with a win in the Super Prestige, Rudervoort, and a week later, he became the European champion for the third time in a row in Italy. Midway through December, Van der Poel's impressive winning streak unfortunately came to an end after 35 consecutive victories in a row, which was just staggering when you think about it. And this was in Rosen, where he finished third more than two minutes behind the eventual winner of two nuts. At the beginning of January, Van der Poel once again became the Dutch national champion for a sixth time in a row. And three weeks later, he became the world champion for a third time in a row in Dubendorf in Switzerland. Despite losing his winning run, he still managed to finished the year with 24 victories. Van der Poel rolled his first race of the 2020-2021 season in Antwerpen at the XT Wo race where he managed to win after a short battle with Eli Isabit and in the following race in the Super Prestige event in Gave the next day, unfortunately he had to submit to Tom Pickock, who was best on the day, but he followed that up by a victory in Namur, and this followed many victories, including Essen, Solder, Brennan, Bal, and Golgem, Holst, and Ham, before he was crowned world champion for a fourth time in a row in Ostend. The following season was not a great one as Macho Van der came to a back injury. He made an appearance at the end of December with a second place in the Denda Monde World Cup, but had to end his season prematurely a day later after retirement in the Zolda race in the Super Prestige. Van der Poel was back with a vengeance the following year and opened up his year at the end of November with a victory in Holst World Cup. Despite this strong start, the very next race in Boom, he had a crash and ultimately finished 13th. But on the following day, he managed to win the Antwerp World Cup. And on the 26th of December, he achieved his third victory of the season in Gavea. And a day later, he fought a duel with eternal rival Wout van Aert in Zolder and it came down to a sprint. But Macho van der Poel lost his pedal and had to settle for second. Second place. At the beginning of January, he won once again in Hertals, and in build up to the World Championships, he managed to achieve victories in Benidorm with an emphatic battle with Wild Bernard and in Beshkon in France. And at the World Championships in Hugoheide, he fought an incredible battle with Wild Bernard all the way to the finish, but ultimately in the sprint, Macho van der Poel was the superior rider and sealed a convincing fifth world title. The 2023-2024 cyclocross season started for Machu Van Paul on December 16th with a victory in the X2O trophy in Hirtals. His first clash a week later with his eternal rival Wout Van Aert produced an incredible display of dominance and Macho Van der Poel won the race by 1 minute and 17 seconds. The Flying Dutchman went on to dominate the next eight races, winning all of them in incredible style, even at the Hulse World Cup, getting some revenge on some rowdy spectators. Before at the Benidorm World Cup, Macho Van der Poel and Wout Van Aert were set to lock horns once again. Unfortunately, Macho Van der Poel crashed into a pole and his unbeaten run came to an end, but he resumed his winning streak, winning two races in the 
the form of Hugerhide and around in the X2O. In Tabor, all eyes were on Machovanapo and he made the most of it, absolutely demolishing the field to clinch his sick elite world title in his career and, and one title closer to the all-time record. So is Machovanapol the GOAT of cyclocross? There are two names to compare to Machovanapol to establish this. That is, of course, Sven Ness, who stands with less world titles than Machu, but 273 victories in total. Machvanapol is great, but still has less than 100 cyclocross victories to the Belgian icon. Whereas Eric de Vlaming, another name also to list, has less wins in total with 93, but has seven world championships titles to his name. So what does this mean to Machvanapol as the greatest of all time? I would say he is the greatest of all time because none of the two other riders have been world champions in another discipline like Metro has been on the road but if we're only focusing on cyclocross you probably would say he is well on the way and even his incredible battles with Wout Van Aert has also been very demonstrative of how far he has come and how strong of a rider he is as well to have someone like Wout competing against him in most of the cyclocross races he has done also shows that I think he is potentially the greatest if if not, you will soon be. But that aside, with numerous titles, records, and unmatched dominance, Vanderpool's impact on the cyclocross landscape transcends eras, etching his name as a true legend in the sport, and the cyclocross world eagerly anticipates his continued unraveling of his extraordinary career. That's basically it for this video. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with all the videos. And of course, as always, let me know down below what you think of Macho Manipal. And if you haven't already, check out the video I did of Macho Manipal's road career. And of course, as always, thank you for watching and I will see you around.